What's up, everybody? I am Scott Baer, AtlantaFalcons.com, digital managing editor, and across from me, head coach Arthur Smith, who's sitting down for the very first time ever in our brand new Ticketmaster Studios. And Arthur, it's been a while since you and I have, have had a chance to uh, catch up. You have hired a defensive coordinator in Ryan Nielsen since then. Uh, what really sold you on him during the interview process, and why was he the right fit for this team? Yeah, we had a very long and thorough process. It was great. We got to talk to a lot of different candidates and a lot of really good candidates. And, uh, you know, for us, it's all about fit, right? There's other great coaches in this league and guys that go with other teams, but Ryan fit us, fit our culture. And really it was his vision and how he wanted to implement that going forward. And, you know, you can get a lot into schemes. There's a lot of talks and a lot of people when they get in these interviews, they give you these grand, plan, grand plans and they really don't have a great implementation you know, to follow that up and, and I'm very impressed with Ryan, you know, talked to him, you know, a few times as we, as we were going through this and, and he's hit the ground running and, you know, there's some things we want to do and it's not necessarily going to be copy and print from what they did in New Orleans. I think that's the key. I would hope, you know, if you've seen what we've done here, certainly go back to offensively. We don't look the same offensively that we did in 19 and 20 in Tennessee and we don't, we didn't look the same last year as we did in 21, you know, playing our strengths and, and whatnot. So. Very excited about Ryan, uh, love his background. He's another big picture thinker, guy that was a former defensive lineman. I uh, love his vision that, you know, to develop players and really schematically about where, where we're, this is going, how we want to defend certain things, first, second down, kind of the trends going around the league. He has a, a long track record of, of being an excellent defensive line coach. Would right. you anticipate him working with the defensive front here as well? Absolutely, and you'll see strategically how we set up the staff. and. and you know, every year is going to be a little bit different based on what your needs are. And there's a natural evolution that goes on. And there's a lot of things behind the scenes that, that people, you know, it's kind of boring and you really want to talk about, yeah. it. you know, the game plan and responsibilities. I think, you know, as a, as you get in these hiring processes, you know, where titles get thrown around and, you know, whether that's agent or, you know, media manipulation, <laughs> however you want to put it, it doesn't really give context of what's really going on behind the scenes. And so Ryan will oversee the front, you know, Lanier, We'll be working with them, so will Dave Huxtable, and we're really fired up to have have that group here and, and where we're going with the front. And you, you the, and Ryan wasn't the only big name defensive coach that you added. You also added somebody that you have a long history yes. with, Jerry Gray, who, who's been a DC at a couple different spots. I think he's been coaching about as long as you've been alive, yes. maybe. Uh, why uh, why was it important to add him to the staff? Well, it's about fit and chemistry and, and mix, and you want to have it, you know. A diverse group of opinions too, and mm -hmm. guys with different backgrounds. And you don't want to ever want to be stale. That you know you have your your non-negotiables, the things that you really value, you know, in your culture and the way you, style you want to play. But you have to be willing to adapt to see the trends. And certainly with Jerry, you know, since I was last with Jerry uh, from Tennessee, he's he's certainly changed and adapted. And been in Minnesota, been in Green Bay, you know, had to face a lot of really good quarterbacks and being in the NFC North, uh, different variations of coverages, the things he learned along the way. Uh, really fits into our culture. We're, we're really excited to have Jerry here too. He'll he'll be overseeing the back end. And and you also have Stephen Jackson moving yes. from the offensive side uh, to the uh, to the defensive backfield as well. Yeah, when you can add quality coaches, and that's another thing too. You know, as you're putting staffs together, it, it was great for his, Steve's professional development. He came over here, mm -hmm. spent a year on the offense, was very beneficial to Dave and I, and a lot of things we did behind the scenes. And Steve's been you know played a long time in this league and has coached. The back end, him and Jerry and I all work together in Washington as well. On the same defensive staff. Really like the chemistry he, Jerry and he have. And really their development plan as well. Where we need to go with the secondary and some of our young players and what we'll continue to add. As I'm looking over this, uh, over this entire staff, you see a lot of new faces. You don't see any new um, uh, quarterbacks coach now that Charles London is in uh, Tennessee. Right. What is the plan uh, for the uh, quarterback spot? Yeah, so Dave Ragone, you know, I'm obviously being our coordinator, he'll also oversee and be working with the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things that Charles did behind the scenes. And, you know, I'll go back to my experiences, whether I was the tight end coach or whatever my title was, it can change year to year. Those are what I'm talking about, context and kind of the, mm -hmm. the mundane of really what goes on in the coaching world. There's a lot of mythology right. out there. And, you know, as you see these snapshots and, you know, sometimes guys get too much credit or they don't get enough credit, depending on, mm -hmm. you know, how you, you shape your staff and, and the work that goes on behind the scenes. And so there's a lot of things that Charles did that we, we believe in developing our own guys here too, where, you know, Mike Petrie and TJ, they'll take on more responsibility along with 
coaching the wideouts and the, and the running backs. We have some great young coaches that have been in our program that deserve a shot. That, you know, Steve King will move over to offense. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Kramer, and those guys deserve shots. And so we'll, we'll distribute different responsibilities. Uh, you know how we game plan and how you know our logistics that go into practice planning. That we're really excited. Those guys as they continue to work their way up. We've also moved Nick Perry over to offense, which will be good for his development, and vice versa we did with, with Mario, with Gabriel. And so he, he'll be working with defense. And I think that's important as you're, you lean into developing your own guys. Mm -hmm. We've brought guys in from the outside, but we also have a, a talent, you know, talented group of young coaches that are, that are working on their craft that can really help us. And uh, we're really fired up about this group. You've been really busy, obviously, hiring um, a lot of these new coaches. But there's, but there's no break. You're getting ready to head off to the NFL scouting combine. You got right. free agency coming up. Is this a really exciting time of the uh, off season for you as you look to upgrade this roster? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's certainly it's got a different feel than we've had the first two years. Uh, you get here, you're new on the job. There's a lot of things that are going on, and you know some of the obstacles that you're trying to work through uh, in terms of roster building. And yeah, we, and we do. It's uh, obviously it's not breaking news to anybody, we, we do have a lot of cap space and we're excited you know, we're about our plan going into free agency and, and certainly with this class. We, we need another good draft class as well. And this is a, a good and an important part of the process as you get to Indianapolis, you know, you got everybody in there, these interviews, uh, really looking forward to those and, and you know, listen to our scouts. These guys have been working on this class uh, for several years and it's important. It's, and you've said several times that it's not just about finding the best 53, it's about finding the right guys. Absolutely. How important is culture fit when you're looking at signing new free agents or adding new pieces to your uh, next draft class? Yeah, it's, it's really important to us. You know, the, the easiest thing is to evaluate, well, this guy can run. Uh, you, know, you can see all that stuff on, on tape. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow, the guy's big, he can run. You know, the minimum job requirements in certain positions. Yeah. But it's about you know, the, the mental makeup, what they're about, their habits, all these things you're, you're digging into and, and getting to know these guys. And again, you, there's gonna be a lot of guys here that we, we wanna coach that we'll never get the opportunity to. You know, some of it the way it falls in the draft, mm -hmm. you know, some of it's luck and then you know, the order where you select it. Um, but I think our staff has done a really good job uh, in our first two years, uh, getting the, the character right, uh, you know, and that, that gets thrown out. It's, it's a vague term, but it's really about the mental makeup, their habits, things we're looking for with these guys and, and you know, growth potential and development. And you were talking uh, right after the, 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 this last season about trying to get better with, 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 with the defensive pass rush and becoming more explosive on the offensive side sure. of that ball. Um, do you look at free agency as a chance to upgrade those two areas? Yeah, I think you use every roster mechanism available. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that happen, um, not, you're going through, you know, not skipping any steps as you're saying, hey, look, if we can add this player, you know, we may, have, you know, may take touches from this guy and, you know, we may have to, you know, move him over here. But if, so there's a lot of strategy involved in that. And again, what we can control and guys will target and then some of it you know, will be out of our control if somebody resigns with their, you know, their own team before they mm -hmm. hit the market. But uh, we've got a pretty good feel and, and this will be a big week for that as well. As you uh, as you kind of move forward here, the, the the Atlanta Falcons were a very good running team last year. Right. Do you how important is it to maintain that efficiency uh, running? And could we see some new faces maybe involved with, with, with the uh, run game? Well, certainly. I mean, I think the one thing that if you can go back and look mm -hmm. that we're, we're willing to do here, you know, it's easy to use, use buzzwords and coach speak about a being adapt and we'll you know we'll mm -hmm. change you know year to year or week to week whatever we got to do to win it but you know we've proven that you know mm -hmm. you go back to 21 we certainly picked the ball up more and lean into that certainly Matt strengths were and what we felt the strengths of the team were as we were you know building the culture out and then you know going into last year you know without having Matt mm -hmm. we obviously signed Marcus and ended up drafting Dez and there were some things that we knew we needed to get better at on the flip side from 21, which sure. a rushing attack. And as, as we leaned into that, we were a lot different than we were in 21. We, we go back and look at our 22 season. Uh, you know, it wasn't just your traditional running game that, that you saw. We were in the pistol more. We used mm -hmm. a lot of the zone read, which we felt played to the strengths and doing everything we could to win win those games. Mm -hmm. As we built it and we made the transition to Dez. And you'll see a, 
hopefully be more balanced because we do want want to get more explosive and whether that comes from the run or you know in the passing game um, there will be more of a balance that that is certainly uh, be our intent going into the 23 season yeah and here comes some quarterback questions uh desmond sure. ritter how do you think he did over his uh four starts to wrap yeah. up 2022. Well, I think Des in the, in the four game sample size, uh, he, he improved a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that the other thing that, that I thought he did well, uh, he didn't repeat a lot of the same mistakes. You know, there's a lot of things that go on, you know, playing late in the season like that, going on the road. Uh, I thought he did a nice job handling those critical downs. Third down, fourth down, getting the situational football, two minute, certainly uh, week after week, improved a lot. And there's a lot of improvements he made from the time he got here. Mm -hmm. Why we're excited to work with him. So I, I do think Dez's future is bright. Is he your starting quarterback in 2023? Look, we're not naming any, any stars <laughs> right now. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of things that, that can happen. Um, you know, very, very excited about Dez, no, no different than we're excited about Tyler Algier and, and Drake London and, mm -hmm. and the improvements they've made and, and guys that are currently on our roster. You know, as always, all options are on the table. Anything we can do to improve this team to help us win and ultimately to win championships, that's what, that's what we're looking for. You were saying that the that, that, that 2022 seven and 10 record was different than 2021. Absolutely. Can you expand upon that? Like, why do you think that that is? Well, different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back and look at those one possession games, you know, they don't necessarily tell the story. They're not all the same. It's mm -hmm. like when you're sitting here and you're looking at some of these titles that get thrown around the staff and nobody really knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. unless you're behind the scenes to give right. context, they don't look, you know, what it, on the surface. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the record was the same. The record one possession games were different. Um, but different situations came up at a different team where I thought we were a little, you know, we obviously veteran heavy on, on the offense and that mm -hmm. was led by Matt. Right. And, and some of the other receivers we count on early and Kyle, you know, obviously he's, he got going in the passing game. So it's a different team. And, and those games got, you know, the way they played out were different. And I think it certainly helped. I think Matt was pretty damn good. In two minute football, you know, when we got the ball, there was a couple games where we had had the lead, where we lost the lead, and we were able to come back and, yeah. and finish to win. Uh, this was a much younger team. The way we played was a little bit different. You know, those one possession games, there was a few of them that, you know, we, we got down early and we clawed back. Uh, just the way we played, what happened in those games, mm -hmm. you know, how we won some of those games and we lost them, every year is a different story. But this team was younger. I think that those experiences, certainly will pay off. Yeah. We were in a lot of pressure situations for a lot of young players. And when you're coming from college football and you're at some of these big programs, you're not in a lot of tight games. Right. You're not. And uh, and that's the beauty of the NFL. You know, you get down to the critical, every snap matters. You know, that's, that's cliche, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And in every phase too, you know, we were able, I thought we improved in the, uh, in the special teams area. Mm -hmm. we certainly made some game changing plays for us as the, as the roster got younger. And some of these young guys, the D'Angelo Malones, the Troy Andersons, Lorenzo Carter, uh, Kaderil Hodge, mm -hmm. uh, Richie Grant, Avery Williams, they made some enormous plays in the kicking game. Obviously, Cordell Patterson was able to break the record, and there were some great blocks on that play. Uh, you know, going back, top of my head, Troy essentially blocked two guys. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's exciting. You know, the way I thought defensively we improved. Uh, certainly, we want to get into some, you know, more long yard situation to be able to pin our ears back, go get the quarterback. That's certainly a point of emphasis, you know, the pass rush uh, and becoming more explosive on offense. It, when, when you look back at this last draft class, you got some big time contributions from Drake, from Troy, all the way down the uh, line. Stacking draft classes is always key when it comes to having good roster depth. What what do you think that you got from this most recent group? And are you really excited to see guys like Drake, guys like Troy, continue to uh, uh, to uh, progress throughout their uh, yeah absolutely. professional tenure? You know, and they, that's the hardest thing about this this league. I mean, it's a consistency. It's about any industry in life is to is to improve in year after year. I mean, that, we've seen a lot of guys that come out strong as a rookie and then you never hear from them again. Right. You hear from guys that people may consider a bust for the first two years and then it clicks for them. And so there's a fine line in there as you're developing and guys, as you're trying to push them, guys that were even part of that 21 class or guys mm -hmm. that maybe are on the roster here before, and guys we've gotten through college free agency at post-draft or guys we put on one-year deals that, you know, that was the only way we could sign them. And, you know, we hope to get them get them back and improve everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly you, you we're excited about the way 
you know, last year's draft class of rookies mm -hmm. as they finish. You know, I th certainly thought Drake and Tyler played their best football down the stretch. I thought Troy did as well. Uh, AK, all these guys. But the hardest thing for them will be there'll be a whole new class coming in. Mm -hmm. And when you're adding free agents as well, is that competition is real. Players and coaches. And, and that's that's the beauty of this league. When you step in there, you've got to prove it every year. And so that'll be our challenge is, is to improve and, mm -hmm. and to win more football games. And we, we want to be playing you know, late in January and early February. And one more thing here, and you talk um, a lot about short-term plan, long-term vision. Mm -hmm. And often that is in reference to a, um, you know, like one player. But overall for this organization, you have short-term plan, long-term vision. Right. Where are you in terms of executing that long-term vision? And yeah. this must be a really exciting time as you kind of continue to execute that long-term plan. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to be willing to adapt too. And there's things that, with the roster, things have come up that, we, you know, we've, we've had to, to, to move on from things that are out of our control. And then certainly you've got to be able to pivot in any good mm -hmm. organization. You better be able to pivot. You know, it's not going to go exactly to plan. And so, all right, what's your contingency? I think we've proven that. Uh, we've been aggressive with some of the deals we've made. And then certainly when we obstacles will come up to be able to, to adapt. And they're no different than changing quarterbacks late in the year. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're in a tight playoff race and certainly weren't out of it, but we thought the best thing going forward for short term was to play Des, and, and certainly for the long term. You see where we are uh, right now, and, and, and we're going forward at that, at that spot. So a lot of things, but year three, the way, where we're at now, certainly uh, our cap's you know, clear, mm -hmm. allows us to do some more things to become more aggressive in player acquisitions. And uh, like, as always, we, we put high expectations on us, and mm -hmm. we've never shied away from that. In 21, we certainly didn't shy away from the 22, but we, we feel really good about where we're going right now in 23. Arthur Smith, thank you so much for stopping by Ticketmaster Studios, and we will talk to you again really soon. Well, I appreciate it, Scott. Thank you.